What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Bob Iger ain't saying nothing new. <laughs> he has come aboard to right the ship, pretty much, right? We know that. Um, he's making a lot of moves. And the moves that he's making are not uh, unfamiliar to us, because it's something that we've been talking about for quite some time, Brian about the amount of content that they've been producing, the quality that has been suffering uh, in terms of VFX, story. Uh, there's a lot of problems that MCU is having right now, Brian, and, and, and he's showing in the box office. Uh, what do you think of Bob, Bob, Bob Iger's comments uh, regarding how they should move moving forward? We know that Bob Iger is doing just much more than Lucasfilms and, and Marvel and some of the IP. He has amusement park. He has a whole bunch of stuff to, to, to manage. But the ones, obviously, that we are uh, uh, find important is the MCU talk and the Lucasfilms talk. So what are your thoughts on how he wants to move moving forward? So let's, 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 let's throw a start with a quote here, which is, I mean... Maybe he listens to the show, Bob. <laughs> Quote, there's nothing any way inherently off in terms of the Marvel brand. I think we just have to look at what characters and stories we're mining. And you look at the trajectory of your Marvel over the next five years, you'll see a lot of newness. We're going to turn back to the Avengers franchise with a whole different set of Avengers. End quote. Agree? Disagree with that? That sentence right there new avengers new team is kind of difficult to visualize the type of team that is capable to beat kang right mm -hmm. him being a, a a much more uh according to the mcu more formidable foe than thanos was and and the the the, the avengers team was pretty stacked and now you got individuals who can't even beat Thor, probably. Who can't even beat the Hulk. It's like, how do you... Cons how do you even consider the, the possibility of them being able... I mean, obviously, if they get Reed Richards in the mix and all that, but there's just a lot to really take in and consider, Brian, and really take seriously in terms of this being uh, another success story for Marvel. It, it, I have a mixed reaction to this quote because i think he's he's saying some things we've said the concept of newness throughout the mcu is something you and i have been all over this idea that marvel is living in the past too much they're trying to recreate moments they've already done or borrow story tropes they've already used that people have seen and they're finding that the audience is over it yeah. and not responding to this so we i agree with him that they need newness i also agree with him when he says you need to be careful about what characters you're using and what stories you're telling i totally agree with that yeah yeah but there's a lot of work to do there to get the machine aligned with what he's saying because when i see things like they're still pushing ahead with production of something like agatha i'm like I, that's the kind of thing i have questions about i'm like i'm not convinced that everyone inside the parliament the mcu is sharing bob Iger's view of what's a good story and what's a good character to put on screen and i think to your point the core issue when we talk about Avengers and we talk about heroes is we what we have complained about is there just aren't a lot of folks who we are dying to see on screen again. That's yeah. and that was never true in phases when they brought in Robert Downey and Chris Evans and Chris Hammond. They gave us something interesting and gave us a reason to come back the next time. And right now it's slim pickings and the ones that you are interested in seeing it's kind of like you know it's like tom hiddleston's loki it's like he's he is he really a hero like he he's yeah. a protagonist but is he really a hero it's like namor's really interesting but like 
I don't. Like, these aren't core Avengers we're talking mm. about. Again, Brian, it'll be interesting to see what translates in terms of content because we still have stuff like Wonder Man coming out. We got the Marvels that Kevin Feige is bigging up crazy. And it's just, I like what Bob Iger is saying. I just doubt or am concerned about their ability to, uh, I, I mean, I wanted to say write the ship, but I don't know what write the ship is now. Because if you write the ship, what does write the ship mean? Does it mean um, writing compelling stories and writing compelling characters? Yes. But to them, is, is it a, just a formula that just doesn't work and they can't get out of? You know what I'm saying? I think the concern is that they perceive their fleet of young Avengers and young characters as well executed and interesting. Because I think they're close to batting zero uh, on that. I think, depending on how you view Yelena Belova, that's the one home run that they've probably hit. Yeah, but in terms of new characters, yes. In terms of like the actress and the character coalescing and being written in a way that was entertaining, fun, and you left both the Black Widow solo film and her little cameo in the Hawkeye series saying, I. I, I am excited to see her on screen again. Yeah, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more. But these other characters, you know, we, we Cassie, Kate Bishop, it, it, I, I just, you know, Ironheart, like these characters are not inspiring franchises to me. And the problem is when I see other, other quote, I know that Marvel has been very ardent in defending Quantumania and saying, this is the movie we wanted to make. And that's where I get concerned. It's like, that's the movie you wanted to make. And the audience is rejecting it. And you are saying, we did a good job with the character development and the new characters we introduced. That's what gives us concerns that newness is not going to lead us where we want to go. It causes a lot of people to say, I'm out. And that's where we're at. And it's showing. No doubt. Now, Bob Iger, to that point, he did say something that you and I were ranting about in the wake of quantum mania which is quantum mania comes out flops basically after the first weekend and immediately peyton reed is making the rounds talking about ant-man 4 and going back to the roots and this quote from bob Iger almost made me think like he saw that interview read that interview and was like hold up because yeah. he said quote sequels typically worked well for us duh that we know that but do you need a third and a fourth, for instance, or is it time to turn to other characters? That that's, sounds like Ant-Man 4 is not getting the green light, among yeah, other that's things. Done. That's done. And I think it's an admission that like Love and Thunder was a disappointment as the fourth film. I think it's an admission that like, we'll talk about the Marvels, but if that doesn't hit, why are we doing a third Captain Marvel film? Some of these characters work, not necessarily about making cameos, cameos, but if the story warrants their appearance, Brian, that's when it gets interesting. And that's where we decide, okay, I want to see more or not. Who knows? Yeah. But just giving us characters and throwing them in there and, 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 and making a franchise out of everything is just not the way, man. It's just not the way. Uh, let us know in the comment section what you guys think about this whole situation. Brian, do you also want to fit in the, the screen tests? So I, I think it does tie in because the question I wanted to ask you is what Bob Iger's dancing around here is he clearly intends to course correct the MCU on the fly. And my question to you is, can that work in real time? Like we have seen franchises break down and that usually le leads to years on the sideline before they come back. You know, Batman, obviously, between Batman and Robin, Batman maybe, and Superman, between Quest for Peace and Superman Returns, and then obviously Man of Steel. Do you think the MCU can actually pivot and rescue kind of its zeitgeist hype, if you will, 
without actually taking a true break from its calendar. That's a, a difficult call, Brian. I, th I think, I don't necessarily think they need to take a break. They just need to be more thoughtful as to what comes next how they tell this story and how it fits into the next one they're telling multiple stories at the same time and things is just getting crazy like i forgot about all that marvel stuff uh the um miss uh, marvel show the, the 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 knowledge that we were given about um the band the the bands and the you oh know, right yeah the bangle yeah uh, yeah 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 there, there was a whole history thing behind that I, I, who cares right um brian is it is it is it fair to say brian and i, I know this this is this warrants another conversation with the moisture verse but i want to just quickly just get your take on this is the fact that the multiverse was done right already and then we came to the multiverse that the mcu is doing and it just doesn't work the movie that i'm referring to brian is everything everywhere all at once everybody loves that multiverse story this multiverse is just what are we what where are we going how are we getting there and who are these people i actually feel like we're like it's very meta like we're living the multiverse while we're consuming the multiverse mm. i don't know how the multiverse became everyone's plot device at the same time, time yeah. so to your point into the spider-verse was creative and different when we saw it on an animated form no way home we had our doubts they pulled it off everything everywhere all at once congrats you just won an oscar for a multiversal show the Flash is a multiversal project. Like, that's the problem is like, yeah. at some point, even if these were all good, how many multiverses can the marketplace support at once? And then to for the MCU, the one who started this path before everyone else to actually, at the moment, be executing it in the most shoddy fashion, definitely definitely is pushing people away who are just kind of like what are the stakes why do i care like it's just dragging pretty much this whole multiverse thing is just dragging and the stories that they're telling doesn't lead us anywhere closer or seemingly close to a resolution we all know that secret wars and kang dynasty are supposed to somehow um be a, a, a sort of part one part two situation similar to the way infinity war and endgame was but i don't see any us getting cl anywhere closer to it other than the little things that they, they've been showing no it's a great point and i think if i think back to phase one two and three there's only really one moment in that build up where marvel kind of goes nowhere and i would argue that's age of ultron right the, the use of ultron doesn't really forward the infinity saga in any meaningful way. Yeah. And I think Marvel got that message, right? They basically were like, okay, we, we got away with one here. We made a lot of money on this movie, but people didn't really love it. Yeah. And this character didn't really hit the way we thought. So let's, let's get back to Thanos and let's get back to building toward him. But I kind of feel like in this, to your point, in this buildup, we are kind of floundering because we don't have that we keep we keep getting teased about kang but we're not really getting focused on the kang we need to follow and i feel like quantum mania was a real bait and switch for that every indication going into that movie was based on the loki finale that was the tease that this was the guy yeah. Like among the variants, this was kind of gonna be the ringleader, and, the, and based on the comics, this fit. He looked comics accurate, and we kind of got into the film, and there was sort of a "ha ha, we fooled you." This is not actually the Kang. It's the three Kangs, probably that you saw at the end in the cutscene. And I'm like, "But that's great, but we don't like Ramatut. Like we don't have like Immortus. We don't have any connection to them specifically yet." And time is running out. It's, it's, it's a matter of how much more can you give me before I say I don't care anymore. You know, even if it's like the 
best movie or idea that they got coming is like, oh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see it, but I don't really care. I'm not excited for it because you haven't shown me anything to get excited for, really. No, and now, and, and, you know, that's the subtle brilliance of the Thanos face turn at the end of Avengers because it's that's a clever bit of we we brought these heroes together to pull off this impossible save of the planet. And the lasting image is this guy, whether you know him or not, from the comics. This looming threat, yes. Who's looming behind as the puppeteer who's relishing the idea of yes. taking on our favorite heroes. And then we're paid off by the fact that it is that same character who they have to defeat in the end. That same guy is the one they have to defeat in the end. It would be like if they had him turn to the screen and then they killed him in Age of Ultron and you're like, well, wait, well, I didn't go anywhere. And now exactly. we got some other guy we got to deal with in Infinity War. So they're kind of like outsmarting themselves a little bit by an overcomplicating and, you know, in some ways maybe even taking Jonathan Majors a little for granted because he can do all of these things. It is a very uh, sticky situation for the MCU, Brian. Um, let's leave it off at, on this note, Brian. Let's discuss these test screenings with the Marvels. One, it's, it's getting to a point where, like, <laughs> everybody was talking about test screenings, the Aquaman, and all, this, all that we know. And now... There was uh, supposedly there was rumors that the test screening for the Marvels was wasn't going that well, and then another one comes out talking about the test screenings are. Now listen, we just need to see the movie, but before we see the movie, we have our opinions on what this movie will be, and if you've been watching the show long enough, we think this movie is going to be horrendous, That's and true. they're and they're bigging it up for us to fall for the trick. Look, man, I ain't falling for no banana in my tailpipe. If the Marvels falls flat, Brian, if it does horribly, which we think it, it, it will, it just doesn't sound compelling to us. And sure, they do. Perhaps they'll 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 use this multiverse plotline in this movie, but it's like, how much more of it do we need? You know, it's like, get to it already. <laughs> Well, I see I see myriad problems already with this film before it goes to the theater, which is why, you know, especially when you take Quantumania now, it's looking like it's going to be like a 500, 550 box, like down from Ant-Man 2. And yes, everyone's going to say, well, you know, Captain Marvel made a billion one. And I'm telling you, you have to ignore that number. That That is a that is a inflated number. Yeah. I could see this movie losing a hundred million dollars. Really? I mean, I, the budget's high, right? This is a thing where they, you know, they change directors. They've had a lot of reshoots. Like, they, they're definitely trying to make it big. Mm -hmm. I guarantee the budget for this is two hundred million, and they're gonna mark. They're gonna have to market it really strong because the brand awareness isn't quite as high. And this is my other. Pro this is my number one problem going in. Is I don't think there's a wide audience who is just dying to see Brie Larson as Captain Marvel again, period. So that right there is a huge issue. Now, I happen to think that Iman Vellani was very cool as Kamala Khan, but here's the problem with that. That is the lowest rated Marvel show on Disney Plus by far. So she did, she might've hit with the target young audience, but she didn't hit with the kind of audience you need to deliver box, box. globally. And then you've got, you know, Tayona Paris as Monica Rambeau, like, great, fine. I, I mean, are you, you know, that's not, sorry, that's not adding a hundred, two hundred million dollars to your take. It just yeah, isn't. I mean, unless yeah. there's some word that she's stealing scenes right and left, which we kind of saw her on screen already. I don't know that she was fine. I don't think she was like super memorable. So that means your titular characters, none of them really is coming in with a ton of heat. Yeah. And then you hear about like, there might be a musical number. You also hear, this is where you're everything everywhere all at once thing, I think could hurt this movie. So one of the gimmicks they used in that movie very effectively was this multiversal idea of the character in one multiverse would physically do something and the characters in the other universes would feel it. So it would be like if Michelle Yeoh 
punched in one universe, that punch could then like resonate through the other universes. That sounds an awful lot like the gimmick they're using in this Marvel's movie where like their powers are effectively swapping and transferring every time they use them through the universes they're in, which is what happened in that cut scene Got at it. the end of Miss Marvel. And I just wonder if people are going to be like, yeah, I just saw this done at sort of an art house Oscar winning level. And now Marvel's just ripping it off. Now, that's not true. That's not really what yeah. happened. But I just worry. It, uh, the perception that. will like, be that. Perception. Exactly. The perception, the perception will be that regardless of what they say or think. Yeah, we thought of it first. Yeah, but we saw it already. <laughs> and it was done I mean, well. This, yeah. And this test screening thing. I think you texted me this. That second one that said the text screenings are fine feels a little fishy to me. Of course, it? hell's yeah, hell's yeah, hell's yeah. This is this is the public relations going out there and 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 do, and working finally. I don't know. So there's a lot of problems. I think Brian, we can fit in. We had 20 minutes. Let's end it here. Um. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Bob Iger's comments. Can they reroute and get to a place where we are wanting more? Uh, and do you think the Marvels is going to be a hit? Are you excited for the Marvels? I doubt it. If you are, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. Let us know in the comment section below. Um, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. You paying attention? Yes, I'm talking. G5. Back